Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial about the Millidor mesh or the brick stitch, whatever you prefer to call it. And this is what it looks like when done in a round. It uh, kind of resembles um, the like bricks being stacked or the mesh stitch, but the mesh stitch is kind of off, kiltered, kind of like this, but not quite. The, I have a, a wash rag using this uh, single crochet mesh and it looked really cool but it's of course it's a mesh it has holes through it and if you do it in a three ply yarn it does if you pull it apart it does have uh, holes in it but if you do it in four ply yarn or the UK and the, and the Australia it's ten ply you pull it <laughs> and you aren't going to get much give there's not going to be any holes or anything in it. So if you want to have a really thick warm hat, this stitch is perfect for that. And if you do want to have a bit of a stretched hat and more of a mesh look, then go with a less ply yarn. And this is what it looks like when it's done and back and forth. And I fought with several different ways to try to get this um, even as I can. This, for some reason, the chain still pulls down, but I managed to figure out a way to keep it relatively straight, though you'll probably still need to do a border or something on it if you're going to make this into an afghan. And also, it doesn't look as much like it, but it's like it's not as thick, but it does look the same. And also, this one here, when done in a row with the the thick four ply yarn I thought well why not make a pot holder out of it so I started making this pot holder and I had it going like this to think about sewing it up and I looked inside and went wait a minute the stitch looks different so I turned it inside out and as you can see the stitch looks so different and it has like more defined look to it and it's the same with the hats. I grabbed them and I turned them inside out. And you can see here, it has more of a defined, like, ribbing through it. This is more of a solid look. But I figured if, so if you wanted to make a hat or something like that, and you wanted to be able to turn it inside out, see, it has more of a, a spiral ribbing to it. <clears throat> so if you want to make a hat and you want it to have this kind of look, then just keep that in mind when you're making it. You'll probably want to make the the ribbing uh, one way and then start by turning it inside out and then start um, maybe even you have to cut the yarn and have it inside out and then start so that when you turn it around you'll have this look to it but the band will still be the right way. It's just an idea. Um, and I'll do a tutorial to show you how to make one of these things. It's pretty cool because this is flat when you go inside out. And when I was doing it the regular way, it had an indention. So I think all in all, this thing is going to look better inside out. Anyway, I thought that was a pretty cool accidental discovery. So I'm going to show you how to make... Uh, not in the round, but back and forth. The round is still going to be basically the exact same thing. You're just going to be doing it back and forth. So, what you want to do, it's worked in twos. The stitch is worked in uh, using two stitches. So, if you're making an afghan, make it as long as you want. And as long as it's even stitch. And then, you'll want to add five to the end of it. Two, three, four, five. So whatever number you got that's even, it's great. Add five after you're done. Reason is, this is what's going to help you keep your your sides straight. <clears throat> you're going to be using double crochets to do that. And this one's going to count as my first double crochet, the first three chains. The fourth chain is going to count as my skipped stitch. So you want to double crochet in the fifth stitch from the hook and chain one. 
and then you want to skip a stitch and then double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet in the next. And continue to skip a stitch, double crochet, and chain one until you get to the end. Okay, I'm at the end. And by the way, I'm only going through the top of the chain. I'm leaving two of the other stitches on the bottom. So anyway, I'm going to chain one and turn. And then I'm going to do like I'm going to do in every round. Do a double crochet in this first stitch here. And then you're going to be working in the skipped spaces from the previous round. Let me get a little closer here. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to be working in the in-between stitches that we skipped before. I'm trying to get it to where you can see a little better, but I guess it's just going to be too bright. Okay, so double crochet. I'm going to go down to the, the chain again. And go into that skip stitch and double crochet. And then chain one. Again, I'm going to find that skipped stitch from the previous row and I'm going to double crochet into that skip stitch and chain one. Again, find that chain that got skipped in the first row, double crochet into it and chain one and continue to do this all the way until the end of the row. Okay, I'm almost to the end of my row here. I did my my last skip stitch from the previous row one. And again, this last stitch here of the chain four that we did, I want you to put a double crochet in the skipped stitch here. You have, um, it's hard to see. This is your double crochet. Then you're gonna have a chain beside it and then the next chain after that. That's the one you want to put the double crochet into. And then chain one and turn. And then you want to start off like you do every round. Put your double crochet into that first double crochet. And then we're going to be working in the same bottom row here, but we're going to be using this spaces in between. So the very first one here, if you're working in a round um, in a circle, at this point you would be looking at it a little different. I think it would be, now you can see it here. This is what you'd be looking at. Get a little closer here. See, there's, there's a big stitch here and a smaller stitch at the bottom. I know it's kind of difficult to see on this, but on your own project you can see there's a big stitch and a little stitch. You want to go into the space above the little stitch, which can be difficult to see every round, but you want to be grabbing two stitches, two row stitches. You're going to be going down past this one and going into the stitch here. And it can be so hard to see in the first round, in the first stitch here. I just moved my stitch over here. Let me see if I can fix this brightness. Okay, I think you can see a little better now. We're going to be working in the spaces below here. This is a small stitch from the bottom to our double crochet. But I'm what I was trying to tell you before, I'm going to be calling these the small stitch and these the big ones. Because these you can clearly see, but these are kind of hidden and pushed down. We're going to be working, and move it over if you can. You're going to be working in the left side of that smaller stitch. So get your, your loop, loop over to make your double crochet, chain one. Again, 
you want to be doing your stitch on the left side of the small bottom stitch. And it gets easier to see later on. It's just these first two rows that can be the biggest problem. Again, you want to put your stitch to the left of the small stitch. And if you're working in the round, it's going to continue to do to be like this the whole way, working in that left stitch. Just continue to do that all the way to the end. It can be difficult to find, but just keep looking for the smaller stitch at the bottom and double crochet in the space next to it. And move the stitch if you need to. When you get to the end here, you have an option to to do a single I mean do another stitch here. You can, but I think I'm going to just go ahead and stick with doing my double crochets here on the end just to make sure it stays straight. So instead of doing that stitch, I'm just going to double crochet. Ooh, sorry. <coughs> I just sneeze. Anyway, chain one, turn, and again I'm going to start my stitch off by doing my double crochet in the first stitch. And then again, we're going to be doing the same thing we just did in the previous round. And I guess it is the same for back and forth as well as in a round. You're always going to be working on the left side of the small stitch, two rows down. So you can tell by this is one row and this is another. Basically, you're grabbing these two stitches. I have pictures of this, by the way, on my site so that you can better see this is one, this is two you're going underneath both of those. So you'll have both of those in your stitch underneath this stitch here. Just pulling them together. And then you just chain one and continue to do this for this round two. Going next to the small stitch. And I'll see you when you get to the end. Okay, I'm almost to my end here. And again, you could do a stitch here, but don't. I suggest you just do double crochet on the end to keep it straight. And chain one and turn. And again, start off at the beginning doing a double crochet. And then again, you're going to be working two rows down to the left of the smaller stitch. And if you can't clearly see on this first stitch, it's so much easier to see as you go along. So if you can find it here where you need to be, then find it here where you need to be, then it's easier to find it here in the first stitch where you need to be. It's a huge tip that helps me out quite a bit, starting to find my stitch three rows to the left first and then work my way back to keep myself consistent. So that's it and as you can see it's looking uh, pretty straight on the sides. Go here. And you just keep going the way that you were going each row and you'll get something like this. But I still think you're probably going to need a border or something on the end. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the tutorial to show you how to do the velador mesh or the brick stitch. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial to show you how to make this, the hats. So it will give you better of an idea of how to do it in a round. But it's still it's the same. And also I'll be doing a tutorial to show you how to make this spot holder. Because it's kind of uh, confusing around the corners and stuff. So um, I'll be doing those hopefully in a week or so. Well thanks for watching. And if you like this video please click like. And please don't forget to subscribe.